Hi, Troy. You've been in the automotive business for many, many years, and you know that's really going well. But then something inside of you said, "I need to start a ministry called Giving Hope." I want you to tell me how that came about out of you know the automotive business that you've been so successful at. How did that come about? Uh, just kind of walk me through that. Sure. You know, when Katrina hit, it was amazing for our automobile group because. Everyone evacuated, and no one could even get back to their house for 30 days. And I remember calling my pastor, and we decided he was going to partner with us, and we were going to create a relief center at our Honda store. And Jim, I got to tell you, it was amazing to watch my employees who lost everything. Their houses were complete. You had two-story houses underwater in St. Bernard. Every dealership I had was underwater. People were just a loss just and, and I watched my employees just amazingly put their needs to the side and start helping us serve at the dealership we were serving 1200 cars a day ice food dog food medical needs and I saw the joy in their face and I remember going home to my wife and say wow this is what it's about it's about giving back and that from that day on I decided I was going to do it different and my wife and I decided to form giving hope you know, I've often heard it said that, you know, out of tragedy, good things can come. And, and while we may be devastated for the moment, you know, we're looking at, okay, how do we turn this into good? And, and I know you're a believer in that. Yeah. It's sort of like let your pain become your purpose. So Katrina, I had five dealerships at the time. The four out of five went underwater. My insurance receivables were over $30 million. And it was amazing. I remember watching TV because I didn't see the dealerships. And I remember CNN coming over the Intercoastal Canal, coming over the bridge with a camera. And I remember watching TV, my dad's behind me, and I remember seeing the dealerships. And I'm like, oh my Lord, all the cars are gone. And I looked again, I'm like, oh no, they're underwater. And I was <laughs> like, and I started crying. I mean, literally, I'm a grown man and I mean crying. And my dad comes and grabs me like you would for your son. Can you see him in pain? And he said, son. He points at the TV, he goes, you see that brick and mortar that comes and goes? See those franchises you represent? They come and go too. You go back and take care of your employees and the community because they're gonna determine whether or not you make it. All right, so we've gotten Given Hope uh, off the ground you know, from, from Katrina. So what that, has that evolved to to this day? Actually, it has really grown incredibly. Currently, Giving Hope operates a full staff kitchen at its Toyota dealership. We cook close to 1,000 hot meals a day. We have a food pantry in our corporate office, which gave away close to 2.2 million pounds of food in 2017. We build an orphanage every year. We have built four orphanages now, Hyderabad, India, Gambia, Africa, Honduras, and currently in Moscow, Russia. We, dot, we, we sponsor special need adoptions. So we actually do that in New Orleans. We do some food work in, in Kansas City. We do outreaches in San Francisco. We do outreaches in LA and San Diego. It's been amazing to see how much of the automobile business has partnered with us and actually help us bless the community. So as you're going out throughout the community, you're, you're really looking for partners to, to help grow the mission, right? So, so tell me what that looks like, what that sounds like, and, and as you, you know, make that pitch to an organization to say, hey, join with us. T tell me how that... Uh, okay, so let's say hypothetically you work at a bank, okay? So you work at a bank. We offer a Giving Hope Day, and it's one of the coolest things that we've had employers do. They come in, and we turn our kitchen over to them. So they prep the food, they cook the food, they deliver the food to the senior living assisted living centers, and they serve the food and eat with the seniors. Some of the most amazing stories I have seen is where a gentleman who worked at a certain bank met a World War II vet who was on Normandy Beach. Guy was 98 years old. So you get a chance to let the vendors really get involved to where they actually do what we call a Giving Hope Day. That's been amazing. Some of our vendors have actually come overseas with us when we do the ribbon cutting for the orphanages. So we get them involved and then they go back to their companies and kind of have that same mission. Well, Troy, I know you're going out and, and talking to businesses about how they can partner, but tell me about how some automotive customers can 
uh, are partnering with you. You know, what's interesting, Jim, is I've actually seen parents send us their kids and say, he needs community service hours, put him to work. And what's amazing is why these 15, 16, 18 year old kids come in and serve food and help needy people and homeless people. And all of a sudden their heart, they, it's like a transformation of their own heart. We've had youth groups come in from as far as, you know, Northern California, all the way to New Orleans to help serve. So for us, it's been a joy to see these young adults get the heart of giving back. You know, one thing about millennials is they want to help. They want to give back. So Giving Hope has given them that opportunity. I've had parents call me and say, Mr. Troy, thank you so much. He needed that attitude adjustment. Or thank you so much because he now realizes how blessed he truly is. So it's been great to see some of our customers give us their kids. Well, Troy, it sounds like it's been an incredible journey since, you know, the days of Katrina to what it is now. But what does the future hold for Giving Hope? You know, one of the things that we have done, which has been amazing, is getting our vendors to partner with us. Banks we do business with, people who supply us tools, people who sell us parts, manufacturers we do business with. And I see the future of Giving Hope taking those relationships and just doing more. I mean, we operate the Giving Hope Retreat Center where we, we have a, a substance abuse facility where we help people out. I see us continuing to build an orphanage every year. I told my wife, I said, at the end of my career, I promise you we're gonna have built 20 orphanages. I see our food pantry going to 300,000 hot meals a year. I see close to three and a half million pounds of food to be given away. We've partnered with Winn-Dixie, Walmart, Second Harvesters. It's just been amazing, Jim, and I'm gonna tell you, and I tell any employee or any employer, never underestimate the value of getting your employees involved in the community. Because when, when an employee sees what an employer is willing to do, it's amazing how loyal they are to the employer, but it gives them purpose. You know, we have a term we call profit for a purpose. We want our employees to know we believe that you should make profit, but we also believe you should give it back. So that's kind of what we do. So the future of us for Giving Hope is to continue to grow and educate the industry on what they can do.